Hello class, this is Kayla Davis with the ODU ePortfolio Studio and I will be showing you how to create your own Wix site. So in order to create your ePortfolio on Wix, we're going to go up to this URL bar and type in Wix.com. And then once you're here, you're going to want to go ahead and click the Get Started button. Then you're going to click continue with Google, um, and then when you do continue with Google, you're going to go ahead and use your odu.edu account, since that's hosted through Google. Um, and then once you have done that, it will take you to the Midas page. If you're not already logged in in another tab somewhere, you'll have to put in your Midas credentials, and then it will lead you back to Wix. So we want to go ahead and create a new site. So that um, since I already have sites on my account, I went to the page that showed my sites. But if you're just creating one from scratch, it will probably bring you to this screen right away. So once you're on the screen, you're going to want to go ahead and click Portfolio and CV. And then you want to click Choose Template where it says Create Your Website with the Editor. And then you're going to want to scroll down and pick um, whichever template that you like. As you can see, when you hover over templates, you have two options. You have the edit option and the view option. The edit option means that you are going to select that template and start working on it um, to make that into your site. The view option just gives you a live view of what the template currently looks like so that you can have an idea before you go ahead and commit by pressing edit. So I think I'll just go with this simple curriculum feed of one and I'm going to click edit when I've chosen a template that I like. And remember, a template is not set in stone. Of course, you cannot go back and choose a different template, but every single thing on this website, you are able to change. So now that you have activated your website, it is time to get familiar with the tools that you use on Wix. So let's go through these options over here on the left-hand side. So the menus and pages option. This basically shows you all of the pages or anchors that you currently have on your page. So this house icon means that this is your homepage. So currently the homepage on my um, ePortfolio that I just activated is home. Then resume is a different page right, because it has this little page icon. Projects is a different page. And then contact is a different page. Some of you might have an icon that's different than this. It might look like a ship anchor. And an anchor is different than a page. An anchor basically divides up one page into a whole bunch of different sections to where you constantly have to scroll down. That can work for some people, but it is recommended that if you have a lot of content that you want to put on your ePortfolio to organize that into separate pages so that everything is not on one page and scrolling forever and ever. Okay, so if you wanted to go ahead and add a page, you can click add page. And then I'm just going to name this to example page. And once you've typed in the new name, you can click on done. And there you have it, you have your new page. Now if you wanted to delete a page, you could go to delete and then you would click delete again and that will officially delete that page. Or say that you're working on a page but you don't want it to be available in your menu for people to click on just yet because it's not finished. What you can do is hide the page. And basically hiding the page allows you to have the page on your site technically but it's not available in the menu for people to click on. So if I were to click on hide, and I go to preview mode, which basically gives you a look at what viewers of your site would see. You can see that they are not able to, like that example page that we created, it's not in the menu and they're not able to click on it. They're only able to click on what's there. But if we go back to editor to make changes to our site and we go up to page contacts or menus and pages, it's basically the same thing you can see that we still have that example page there. It's still an existing page. It's just not available for viewership other than the person who is editing the page, which would be you. So let's go ahead and show this page and work on adding text and images. 
So this add button on the left hand side is going to be your best friend when you are creating a website. There's so many different tools in here that you can use, including text, images, buttons, boxes, strips, videos, and so much more. So I'll kind of give you an overview of the most commonly used tools out of all of these in the menu. So let's just start off with simple text. When you have a page that you are designing, it's easiest to just have heading text and then paragraph text. I just usually drag in heading one just by clicking on that and moving it up to the top of my page. And I can click on edit text. And then once I've clicked on edit text, you can see I have all these options. So I can change the font right here to anything that I want. Um, I can, you can change the type of heading, but when you go to add and then heading, I know all of these look different, but it really doesn't make too big of a difference because you can edit the text to make the text the size that you want. So if you want this to be smaller, you can absolutely do that. If you want this to be larger, you can do that as well. You can bold it, italicize it, underline it, change the color. So if I wanted to change it to pink, you can do that as well. You can left align, center it, or right align it. You can make it bulleted and numbered list. And you can add a variety of effects to it, to the lettering. Um, and then you can mess with the character and line spacing. So there's a lot of editing that you can actually do when you are implementing text onto your ePortfolio, which is probably going to be the most common tool that you use, of course, because you want to make sure that you explain all of your work. So now that I have my heading text in there, let's say that um, this is project one, right? And I kind of want to talk about this one project that I did for a class. So we're going to go back to add here. And now I want some smaller text to kind of just talk about what I did for project one. So this is where I come to my paragraph text here. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the first one because once again, we can change it even when it's already on the page. And we can actually drag this out as well, right? Click on edit text and we can say, this project was for, whoops, my cell bio class. And then you can of course elaborate more, okay? And then once you're done, you can just click any empty space outside of this text box. And then there you have it. And then let's go ahead and make sure we save our changes. We would click save and continue. And now our changes are saved. So there's a difference between saving your site and publishing your site. When you save your site, you are basically saving any work that you have done, but that doesn't necessarily mean that visitors can see everything new that you've applied to the site. In order to let these changes be seen by anyone who is visiting the site, you need to make sure that you publish it. So then you would just click the publish now button. And then it says, congratulations, your site is published and is live online. And this is the URL that you would use to share your site with other people. Now, make sure that you use this one that's a little bit shorter, right? Because if you try to use this one up here, it's an editor link. And of course, since you're the only editor, if you try to send that to other people, then they're gonna get an error message. So you need to ensure that you're sending them the link that you get from when you publish the site. Very, very important, okay? So now that we've learned how to save our changes, add heading text, add paragraph text, I think it's really important to know how to add um, images as well. So you can adjust your page height to give you a little bit more room. And then if we want to add images, we go to the add button. We can go to image and then my image uploads. And then you can go to upload media to select something from your computer, or you can even go to unsplash to select something that will be um, copyright free that you can use. I'll just use, let's see, this person messing with an iPad. Right? And I can just add that to my page. And there you go. Project one 
this can be the picture of it. Um, if you have something that is not an image, but maybe a document, we recommend that you put all of your documents in PDF format. So we're going to adjust the page height here to give us a little bit more room. This might take a little bit of clicking and dragging, okay? And then if you wanna add a PDF, what you actually have to do is go to this Add Apps icon, and then you're in the Wix app market. What you're gonna do is you want to have the PDF viewer show up, but sometimes it doesn't show up here, and if it doesn't, what you would do is just type in PDF, and then click PDF viewer, and then add to site. And then there you go. So you have a PDF viewer now onto your site, basically meaning that you can embed documents directly onto your site. So if I were to um, double click anywhere in this document, I can upload a PDF directly from my computer by clicking upload media, upload from computer, and I can just choose this PDF, for example. Now you need to make sure it is in PDF format. It says .pdf at the end. This will absolutely not work with Word documents. You need to ensure that this is a PDF document. So once you've made sure that you are using a PDF and not a Word document, you're gonna select choose or open, depending on your operating system. And then it will go ahead and select that document. It'll upload and select it. And then you can click on add to page. And there you have it. You have it embedded right onto the page. As you can see, you have these little white dots up here. Um, that actually allows you to kind of make the document bigger, click and drag it outward, um, and kind of adjust. And you can do this with images as well. You can see you have these white dots here that allow you to make the image bigger or smaller. So that's a really helpful tip to use. One last helpful tip that I like to tell students when they're getting started is if you don't want to embed all your documents onto the page, you can actually use these things called buttons. Now, if you go to the add icon, you can go down to button and then you can choose any one of these. So let's just go with this one right here. Now, what is a button? A button is basically just a fancy integrated hyperlink. So if you go to this link icon, you can basically link it to anything you want. You can link it to a web address, another page on your site, an anchor on one of the pages on your site, um, or you can do a document. This one is going to be very popular. So if we want to link out this button to a document, we select document, then we select choose file, and then we'll select whatever PDF we want to link um, our button to. Remember, use PDFs and not Word documents. Then we're going to click Add to Page. And then we'll click Done. Let's go to Preview Mode so that we can actually interact with everything that's on our site. And if we click on the button now, you can see that it opens up the PDF fully um, in our browser. So that's the joy of having buttons, I love using them. Um, if we go back to editor, you can actually change what the button looks like by clicking on design, customize design, and this gives you a variety of things. You can change the fill color um, and give it a whole bunch of different colors. You can change the design, mess around with the border, the shadow, the text. So really just play around with Wix and see what suits you. And then if you wanted to add a new section onto your page, that's not the same as the background color, you can do that as well. This is my last tip. I said the button was my last tip, but this is actually my last tip. You can go to strip right here. I usually just go to classic, and then I take this white box here, and I drag that. And then now you have a separate strip on your page. So if you wanted to make it a color that is independent from the background color of your page, you can do that as well. So that's something that I use often if I have a long page that I want to divide in sections. So that's basically the main setup of how you use Wix when you first start off. If you have any questions, you can contact the ePortfolio Studio and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.